This past summer I was swimming and I realized that as I had a deep breath of air in my lungs, I was able to float, but the moment I exhaled them, I sank. And it got me thinking about density. And that's not a surprise considering I'm a chemistry teacher, I'm a professional nerd. Uh, but it's something that as we start this year, it's a, it's a good review of previous science courses. And so this video is all about density. Density is simply how much matter is present in a given volume. So I can have the same volume in these two uh, samples, but the right one has much more mass. There's more particles in the same amount of space. So the one on the right here is more dense. Um, I could also have just a smaller volume in the same amount of mass. If you count up how many dots there are in the left box and the right one, there's 10. So they have the same mass, but a different volume. Uh, notice that the particles on the right are much more tightly packed. And so for that reason, they are more dense. In an earlier video, we talked about how matter is anything that has mass and volume. Mass is the amount of matter and the volume is the space that that matter takes up. Now, if we divide the amount of mass by the amount of volume, we get what's known as the density. And so you can see this density equation as density equals mass divided by volume, or sometimes you'll see it as just the variables D equals M over V. So let's say I had this silver colored ring here. And I knew some information about it. I knew its mass was 12.6 grams and its volume was 7.24 milliliters. Knowing the mass and the volume, I can use my density equation to figure out the density of this ring. I just simply plug in what I know for the mass, 12.6 grams, and the volume, 7.24 milliliters. Calculate, expressing to three significant figures, I get 1.74 grams per milliliter. Great, so I got the density of this ring. Why does that matter? Who cares? What are we going to do with that information? Well, here's why that matters. As long as we know that this ring is a pure element, I can look at a table of data and try to figure out, based on the density, what's the identity of this ring. And so in our class, we use reference tables. Table 16 has a listing of properties of selected elements. Um, I just slide over to the density column. Oh, and there it is, 1.74 grams per milliliter, which is the same as grams per cubic centimeter. Who is that? That's magnesium. So now I know that this ring is made of magnesium. Now I do want to back up for a second. Earlier I gave some example data for mass and for volume. And to get the mass of a ring is probably pretty easy. You just slap it on a balance and the balance tells you the mass. But how do I figure out the volume of this ring? The easiest thing to do is to use something called water displacement. This is where we take an object and we submerge it in a graduated cylinder that has some water, and then the difference in the water volumes is equal to the object's volume. Let me show you. If I had this ring and I had a graduated cylinder, I'd add some water to the graduated cylinder, just enough to cover up the object I want to measure, and then I'd take the volume at the beginning. I'm going to use the meniscus, which is the bottom of that kind of flat U there in the graduated cylinder. Then I'm going to insert this ring and the water level as it rises will give me a final volume. The difference between these two volume measurements should be equal to the volume of the ring itself. As long as your object can go into water, this is probably the easiest way to figure out the volume of an irregularly shaped object like a ring. So density is probably one of the most basic chemistry concepts, one you probably learned in middle school science can help us identify substances, and for that reason, it's a very useful property. Thank you.